So, uh, today uh, let us uh, go over some tutorial problems uh, in at the end of the first chapter for example, so there is this chapter called countable and uncountable. So, at the end of this chapter there are uh, some questions like question 6 uh, specifically and then uh, question 9 I am going to discuss ok. So, question 6 is uh, imagine there is a rubber band, so that means uh, uh, this is the rubber band. Uh, okay. So, let me uh, erase this part, I am not interested uh, in this. Okay. Uh, so, there is a rubber band and uh, it is, uh, it can be, so it is tied to these ends, basically the rubber band is uh, fixed here and it is also fixed uh, here ok. So, that means it is fixed at two ends and it can be stretched like this. So, in question 6 uh, it cannot move uh, up and down it can move only horizontally that means it can move like this like this. So, uh, what I do is I stretch this rubber band I hold the middle and stretch it like this. So, the left half will be stretched the right half will be compressed. So, uh, that situation is described by this whatever I have written here. So, lambda is uh, uh, between 0 and L ok. So, that means uh, lambda is along the, so this is 0 and this is uh, L. So, lambda means uh, any point in between. So, um, x lambda x lambda t so, that means uh, x uh, lambda t means basically the displacement of uh, some point called lambda. So, see the rubber band uh, can actually, uh, so if it does not get stretched, uh, so if the rubber band is not stretched then this is same as lambda. So, so that means there is no displacement, so that means the distance is same as uh, the distance along the horizontal. So, so in general this is not true, so that means they will they will displace by some amount. So, um, so it will you cannot say it is the same as this ok. So, they will uh, because it is, um, so the thing is first of all uh, this is always true, that means uh, this is equal to this equal to 0. So, that means that uh, this point is fixed and this point is also fixed. So, that means these cannot be displaced. So, these are displacements right. So, x is displacement. So, it cannot displace. So, this is always fixed. So, this uh, every, so at all time it has to be obeyed. So, specifically at t equal to 0 also you have to obey. So, this uh, initial condition is basically uh, consistent with uh, this requirement ok. So, it is, uh, so this initial condition is consistent with this requirement that uh, at all times uh, x equal, uh, when lambda is 0, x is 0 and when lambda is L also x is 0 ok. So, it, it is not, uh, rubber band is not stretched when uh, you are close to the one of the end points. So, the maximum stretching happens in near the middle. So, that is understandable is not it. So, if you uh, put your finger near the middle and stretch it, so you are you are going to stretch it like this and uh, so then that is why I have shown here if you enlarge this you will see that I have shown that uh, the rubber band actually gets stretched, 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 stretched then compress, compress, compress. So, you can see that happening here. So, uh, so the bottom line is that uh, this is the situation. So the initial condition is given by this. So, uh, so what is the question? The, so the question is find the tension uh, in the rubber band at some value of lambda at time some time t. So because at time t equal to zero, I I stretch like this and I release. Okay. So, the thing is that I, I stretch I do not keep it like that at t equal to 0 I stretch like this 
I stretch according to this. So, that means that the speed at which it, the rubber band is moving is 0 at time t equal to 0. So, it is not moving at all. So, it is uh, it is perfectly still, it is not moving, but it is uh, it is stretched and compressed. So, in left part of it is stretched, right part of it is compressed. So, if I release like uh, with that situation, I release the rubber band clearly it will uh, start to oscillate left and right is not it. So, it will uh, so it will first go left then right so it will create some kind of a disturbance. So, the question is how to calculate uh, the displacement as a function of time and from that uh, how to get the tension in the rubber band ok. So, that is the basic question that is there in question number 6. So, how to find the tension in this uh, rubber band. And the other thing is what is the elastic energy that means what is the potential energy stored in the rubber band as a function of time. Yeah, so, the total potential energy what is how much is stored. So, these are interesting questions though that is the elastic energy that is stored in the rubber band. So, uh, so how, we, how are we going to answer this question? So, first you have to model the rubber band in some physically reasonable way. Okay, so, that, that is the first step. So, the first step is to model the rubber band as, uh, as some physical system which we know how to handle. So, if you remember in the lectures I have explained uh, uh, how to model the system. Uh, so, we have a mass and spring mass spring that type of an arrangement and we have learned how to model that. So, I am going to somewhat uh, repeat that uh, activity to some extent. Okay, so, uh, let me show that to you. So, uh, so the way to model that is uh, ok. So, it so imagine that there is some there are a bunch of springs like this. Okay. So, then there is a mass. So, so this is so the claim is that the rubber band can be thought of like this. So, some limiting case of this system is the rubber band. So, in what way? Okay. So, this is some small mass. So, these are all some small masses and uh, this is all some springs with constant k. So, the question is uh, the idea is that the uh, displacement. So, that means the idea is that these, uh, these masses become very close to each other. So, so, if you have lots and lots of springs and lots and lots of masses all very close to each other then it becomes like a rubber band. So, the limit as uh, so this is the n. Uh, so, this is uh, 1, 2, 3 up to n ok and uh, there are n minus 1 springs because between 1 and 2 there are uh, there is 1 spring. So, between uh, 1 and 3 there are 2 springs. So, between 1 and n there will be n minus 1 springs. So, there are n minus 1 springs and n masses. But the idea is that uh, you make the uh, number of uh, masses tend to infinity, but you make the distance between masses. So, that means the equilibrium distance may be some a right. So, uh, or epsilon. So, le let me think of that as epsilon. So, I have called it epsilon. So, epsilon is when the spring is not stretched. So, when none of the springs are stretched, uh, so it is epsilon ok. So, so then clearly L is equal to n minus 1 into epsilon because epsilon is the length of the unstretched or uncompressed spring or just one spring when it is not stretched or compressed has a length of epsilon and there are n minus 1 springs. So, the total length of the rubber band is basically n minus 1 into epsilon which is fixed. So, the idea is you make uh, n tends to infinity, but you make epsilon tends to 0 such that L is fixed 
ok. So, that means uh, you fix the length of the rubber band that means uh, it is uh, yeah. So, you fix the end point so the distance between the end points is the length of the rubber band. So, uh, that is not uh, total is not changed, but the number of springs becomes infinity and the uh, size of each spring becomes 0. So, it becomes a continuum system. So, basically uh, the mass spring mass spring system becomes now an actual rubber band. So, now let us, uh, so if you accept that kind of an analogy, we can go ahead and write the kinetic energy, right. So, the kinetic energy is half m L equal to 1 to n x dot L squared, right. So, x x L will be, so x L means the uh, lth, uh, lth mass. So, the, dis, uh, the displacement of the lth mass as a function of time. Okay. So, this will be the kinetic energy of the system. So, what is the potential energy? So, the potential energy is uh, uh, this one, the potential energy is stored in the all the springs, there are n minus 1 springs. So, I have to count all the springs and it is half k displaced. So, the change in the length of the spring. So, if m is the displacement of the mass from the equilibrium position. So, I mean if x l is the displacement of the lth mass from the equilibrium position and uh, x l plus 1 is the displacement from the um, thing, uh, then it is clearly equal to. So, this is the potential energy stored in the spring. So, um, so if you take uh, l equal to 1, you will get x 1 minus uh, x 2 whole squared. So, that is the basically the amount x 1 minus x 2 is the amount by which the a spring between mass 1 and mass 2 has stretched. Okay. So, it is the difference in the displacement between 1 and 2 that is how much the spring has stretched. So, if uh, x 1 and x 2 are same then spring has not stretched them even though both have moved. Uh, so, x, if x 1 equals x 2 what that means is both have both the masses 1 and 2 have moved by the same distance. So, if they have moved by the same distance the spring will not stretch. So, if they are displaced by the same amount, then the spring will not stretch or compress. So, it the amount by which the spring stretches or compresses is the difference between the displacement of uh, mass 1 and mass 2. So, that will be the amount by which the string stretches or compresses, uh, so that the spring between 1 and 2 stretches or compresses. So, similarly you can uh, count all the other ones by adding L equal to 1 up to n minus 1. Okay. So, bottom line is that you can now uh, convert this into a, uh, a continuum problem. So, how to convert this into a continuum problem? First of all, uh, you think of uh, x L, you will uh, think of this as x of, so I will call this uh, s of L comma t. So, where s of l is equal to l into, so I, I will think of uh, s of l as, uh, so I, I want to count this as the origin, okay. So, I, so I will think of this as l into epsilon, okay. So, uh, okay. So, if, if suppose I want to count uh, that as the origin, then I will make it like this. So, I will count this as L minus 1 into epsilon. So, when uh, when L, L is equal to 1, S L is 0. So, that is the S L equal to 0 situation. So, this I will call as, uh, so this this one I will call as uh, displacement equal to 0 because 1 is uh, like uh, 1 is actually same as this uh, wall here. So, that this 1 does not move. Okay, So, it does not displace. So, that is already fixed. Similarly, N does not move. It is already fixed. So, uh, so the point is that uh, uh, these things do not move. So, that means, uh, uh, so when L is equal to n, you will get n minus 1 into epsilon which is capital N which is also fixed, okay. So, now uh, the point is that uh, if uh, what is uh, sigma L equal to 1 to n, it is basically same as uh, integrating with respect to s, but then dividing by epsilon. 
So, uh, whatever you decide to uh, do summation because you are trying to uh, add uh, all small small things. So, it is same as integrating and then dividing by epsilon. So, this basically, uh, so, so the magnitude of d s is anyway epsilon uh, roughly speaking. So, you are uh, basically this is what you are doing, you are adding means uh, discrete adding becomes same as integration in this limit. Okay. So, as a result I can write the kinetic energy uh, very nicely as uh, half m into uh, integral okay, uh, d s into d x s t by d t whole squared. Okay. So, that is what that is, but keep in mind that m is a small mass and that small mass is basically epsilon into rho, where uh, rho is mass per unit length. Okay. So, this m is a small mass and uh, there are uh, uh, so, there is one mass for every uh, distance epsilon. So, what is the mass per unit length? So, after every epsilon you will find one mass sitting there. So, that means mass per unit length is uh, m by epsilon which I have called rho. Okay. So, that means this, this is nothing but, so this is nothing but, so this is nothing but rho. Okay. So, that is rho. So, what is potential energy then? So, potential energy is uh, similarly, so here you see, uh, so uh, let us try to understand how to write this. So, you see what is this equal to? This is basically keep in mind that uh, S L plus 1 is same as S L plus epsilon because you see if I change L to L plus 1, uh, I will basically add an epsilon, is not it? So, this is nothing but S L comma T into S L plus epsilon comma T. So, now if I do Taylor series and keep the first term, I will get minus epsilon into d x by d s, is not it? So, that is what that is because uh, it will cancel out. So, this is Taylor series. So, uh, so then uh, I can easily write my, uh, so remember what that is capital U is this. So, the potential energy therefore, uh, can be written as one half times uh, integral d s by epsilon. into k into minus epsilon d x by d s whole squared. Okay. So, now this is same as uh, one half of k into epsilon into d s d x by d s whole squared. Now, this k into epsilon uh, will be see uh, epsilon finally tends to 0. So, the idea is that this, this is some fixed quantity. So, k tends to infinity, epsilon tends to 0 such that, such that k into epsilon is kappa which is finite. Okay, so, that is the idea. So, we are going to make, uh, so the idea is that the, see because the springs are so tiny they will have no effect unless they are also very stiff. So, so the idea is that you make them more and more stiff as you make them smaller and smaller. So, they will continue to have some effect. 
So, the spring constant becomes larger and larger as you make the springs smaller and smaller in size. So, in the limiting case the springs become infinitesimal in size, but they become infinitely stiff. So, but then the product of the size of the spring and the spring constant itself is something fixed, it is basically something uh, you can think of that as the cumulative stiffness of the spring. All right, so, so that would be the continuum analog of uh, the problem that you are studying. So, that means you can write down the Lagrangian. So, Lagrangian is kinetic minus potential if you remember. So, this is basically given by the uh, kinetic, remember how we wrote that? So, it is going to be like this. So, this is my kinetic. So, it has one half. So, the integral will be there always times rho into dx by dt whole squared minus kappa into dx by ds whole squared. Okay. So, uh, so basically this is my Lagrangian of the system. So, now what is the generalized coordinate here? So, the generalized coordinate is x s comma t. So, remember that this s now takes on the value or takes on the role of an, uh, an index. See otherwise uh, in, uh, in uh, point particle mechanics when you have a finite number of degrees of freedom you would write the generalized coordinate as q1, q2, q3, q4 like that. So, if there are 4 generalized coordinates it would be q1, q2. So, that 1, 2, 3, 4 you can think of it as i. So, it will be q q subscript i. So, this s is something like that. It is a, it has the role of that index i. So, but then now this system has become a field. It has become, uh, it has infinitely many degrees of freedom. So, that index has now become a continuous variable. So, that infinitely many degrees of freedom. So, that is why this system uh, we are describing basically the uh, a field. Okay. So, we are describing a field. So, now the question is that uh, we have to learn how to do various things. So, so, the final question that has been asked in this question number 6 is find the tension in the uh, in this rubber band at any point uh, lambda that means some uh, at any point between 0 and L. Uh, so, at different points there will be different uh, amounts of tension. So, and, and at different times there will be different tensions because remember what you are doing, you are stretching the rubber band in a particular peculiar way uh, that means the left half is stretched, the right half is compressed and uh, you are releasing uh, from rest at t equal to 0 and then you are watching what is going to happen. What is going to happen is the rubber band will oscillate horizontally from left to right and uh, it does so indefinitely because there is no damping, there is no friction, so it will keep oscillating. So, the question is, uh, uh, so you have to uh, first solve for the displacement as a function of time, then only you can understand. Uh, so, from that you can calculate all the other things. So, you can calculate what is the tension in the rubber band at any point uh, in time, at any time. Uh, after the you release or you can uh, I mean the other question that has been asked is what is the total potential energy basically the elastic energy in the uh, rubber band. So, that is basically the potential energy of all the springs. So, that also we can calculate. So, how to calculate uh, uh, so, so I will tell you one by one. So, first let us calculate x of t. So, if you write down the equation of motion for this the Euler Lagrange equations, so clearly it will be what? It will be like this uh, uh, x dot d by dt equals dl by dx. So, if, if it was a finite number of degrees of freedom it would be like this, otherwise it would be, uh, so here this instead of j we are writing s. So, so that is the only difference. So, the instead of j being discrete uh, j at the generalized coordinate, it is uh, labeled now by a continuous index s. Otherwise, uh, it is the same like Euler Lagrange equation. So, the clearly the answer is uh, dl by uh, dl by dx dot is clearly equal to uh, 
uh, rho into uh, dx by dt which is basically x dot means this is same as x dot that is what we mean by x dot because it is partial derivative because I am just uh, uh, I mean I am unnecessarily reminding myself that I have to differentiate I have to keep s fixed uh, while differentiating time that is quite silly obviously s has to be fixed because s is something like j it tells you the jth generalized coordinate or sth generalized coordinate. So, s just tells me uh, s sth generalized coordinate just like j is the jth generalized coordinate. So, when, when I write uh, d x j by d t I do not unnecessarily write like this I mean uh, in, in the sense that uh, I am not like going to remind myself to keep j fixed while differentiating with respect to time because nobody ever does that. So, I do not see why I should remind myself to keep s fixed while differentiating time. So, the only reason is because s is a continuous variable and it is tempting to differentiate that because it is continuous variable that is the only reason why you might be uh, misled. But if you use even half a brain you will realize that that is quite silly that you are not going to do that. But anyway it is uh, customary to write partial derivative even though it is uh, superfluous. Okay, so, um, so this is what that is. So, that is a um, generalized momentum. So, this is so it just comes from here just differentiated the square goes away and that uh, you will get a 2 there and the 2 cancels with a half and you get this. So, uh, similarly what is dl by d uh, x uh, x it is uh, huh, this is more complicated. So, because you see you have to do this carefully. So, this is basically with respect to some s. So, this is also actually with respect to some s. So, the question is uh, how would you do this. So, first uh, first of all uh, you know when you are see here it is x dot and x uh, the dependence on x is here through here right. So, uh, here what you have to do is uh, you have to uh, differentiate see first I will I will write. So, first I will write L in this way first I will change to s dash because I, I mean I do not want to confuse this s that is outside and s that is inside. Okay, so, that is the thing. So, I have to make them uh, different. So, uh, so, first I will uh, write like this. So, now uh, if I take d l by d s uh, x s t. So, what will I get basically here of course, this is an x dot. So, I cannot so the by I mean uh, by definition this is 0 because you uh, I mean we do not uh, we think of q and q dot as independent in Lagrangian mechanics q and q dot are independent. Okay, So, this is like x dot. So, you are not supposed to differentiate that. So, then it is uh, basically so that is before you obtain the trajectory q and q dot are unrelated. So, this is Lagrangian is when you before you obtain the trajectory. So, it is only in see in fact we are trying to obtain the trajectory now we have not yet obtained the trajectory. So, until you obtain the trajectory q and q dot are unrelated. So, you might be confused that how do you uh, why are you saying q and q dot are unrelated after all. If the, if the par particle follows a trajectory then certainly q is related to q dot because, but then remember that we have not reached that stage yet. So, this is we are, we are trying to determine the trajectory. So, in order to determine the trajectory we have to first uh, like treat it as a independent thing and then you find out which is that uh, Euler Lagrange equation that determines the trajectory. So, in order to uh, evaluate or write down the Euler Lagrange equation you have to treat q and q dot as independent. So, that is the prescription. Okay. So, having uh, obtained the equation 
there is the Euler Lagrange equation that is then going to determine the trajectory. Okay. So, until then S and uh, Q and Q dot are independent. So, now this is what we are supposed to do. So, I am going to suppress the bracket T, uh, well of course, it is a function of time and it is the same time all the time, I mean it is the same time uh, outside and inside. So, I am going to suppress that, so it is this. Okay. So, now how do you write uh, this in a more, uh, in a simpler way? So, this is clearly going to be So, it is 2 times T x s dash by d s dash. So, I have, I have to differentiate, see there is a x sitting here. So, I have to differentiate with respect to x s. So, uh, so, what that means is basically first I, I use chain rule, I differentiate uh, with respect to uh, whatever is in the bracket, then I differentiate whatever is in the bracket with respect to x s. Okay. So, and then if so, differentiating in the br uh, bracket whole squared, I will get 2 times this whatever is in the bracket, this one times uh, d by d, uh, uh, sorry, it is d by d, yeah, so this, so it is d by d excess of whatever is in the bracket, but then now I am going to interchange, so I have uh, actually skipped 2, 3 steps. So, I am, I am going to then interchange. Um, differentiating with respect to s dash and differentiating with respect to x s, I am going to interchange. So, if I interchange then I will end up with this. Now, what is uh, d x s by d x s? Okay. So, this is basically the Dirac delta function s minus s prime. Okay. So, so in other words because x, x s is unrelated to x s dash, so, these are like, uh, it is like asking what is uh, d q i by d q j. So, if q i and q j are your generalized, it is going to be Kronecker delta i j, right. So, because uh, if it is uh, the same generalized coordinate, then answer is 1. If there are different generalized coordinates, the answer is 0. But here now this uh, i and j now uh, go away and we take on the role of uh, uh, continuous variable s. So, now it becomes a Dirac delta function. So, that means I am allowed to now write d l by d x s is now equal to minus 1 half kappa integral 0 to l d s prime. So, I will get rid of the 2 into half is 1. So, I will write, I will not write that 2 anymore. So, it is then this a times a d by d s dash of Dirac delta s minus s dash. Okay, so, that is what that is. So, now I can integrate by parts. So, integrate by parts means I put this uh, outside and then the end points will make it 0. So, the boundary terms will become 0. So, then uh, the only term which will uh, survive after integrating by parts is basically this. Okay. So, now this is clearly equal to kappa into d squared uh, x by d s squared. Okay. So, that is what that is. So, in other words this is equal to this. So, uh, so that is it. So, that is how you write down the Euler Lagrange equation. So, so d l by uh, d x dot was this right. So, whereas d l by d x was this. So, now, so that means I can write uh, d by d t of d l by d x dot which is rho into d x by d t is equal to d l by d x which is kappa into d squared x by d s squared. 
ok. So, therefore, this is same as saying rho into d squared x by d t squared is same as kappa into d squared x by d uh, d s squared. So, this is same as writing uh, d squared by d s squared is 1 by c squared d squared x by d t squared. So, now you can see that uh, this, uh, this is a familiar wave equation. So, where 1 by c squared is basically rho by kappa. Okay. So, where sp c is now the speed at which uh, uh, those disturbances in that rubber band propagate. So, remember what is happening, see there is a, now we have almost forgotten what is the model we are studying. So, it is basically a horizontal rubber band that is stuck between uh, two fixed, uh, uh, maybe some two fixed uh, sticks. So, you have two fixed uh, vertical sticks and there is a horizontal rubber band that is tied between the two sticks and uh, so the idea is that it is of some length and you stretch the rubber band in the middle. You will, so, the left half will get stretched, the right half will get compressed and you release uh, from rest. Then the rubber band will uh, start uh, oscillating horizontally from left to right and the disturbances basically the displacement that propagates will obey a wave equation because it will create waves that means waves means the uh, it will create basically longitudinal waves because the displacement is in the same direction as the uh, direction of propagation. So, it will create purely longitudinal waves which will propagate. So, now the point is uh, we have to uh, apply the boundary condition because the wave this, this is always true the wave equation will always be obeyed, but then we have to match it with the um, proper initial conditions that uh, the problem has supplied. So, first uh, let us write down the most general solution of this. Okay. So, the most general solution of this, I, I will not prove this, but it, it is very well known that the most general solution of the 1D wave equation can be written on very easily. It is some function of u, x plus c t and uh, linear combination of some function of x plus c t and some other function of x minus c t. So, the, so, in fact, you can substitute this and show that this is always obeyed. So, for any u 1 and u 2, uh, which are functions of uh, their arguments this is always valid ok. Sorry, uh, there is a s, uh, this is not uh, this is s, s plus c t and s minus. So, it is s and uh, s minus, yeah. So, you can just go ahead and substitute this and you will see that it is always obeyed ok. So, if that is the case, then what is the, the problem uh, description? Problem 6 says that this is given. So, the initial displacement is given as sin of s into pi by l. So, instead of lambda, I am writing s. So, uh, so this means that u 1 s plus uh, u 2 s is basically this, but then notice that uh, the initially the uh, means the rubber band is at rest initially. So, that means the initial velocity or the initial speed of the rubber band is 0 at all values of s at no point in the rubber band, the rubber band is moving initially. Initially all points are stretched to some extent or the other, but initially they are not moving to begin with. So, once you release they will start moving. So, initially they are not moving, so that means basically u 1 dash is same as uh, u 2, because you see uh, uh, this is related to c into u 1 dash minus u 2 dash. So, this is equal to 0. So, that means uh, x dot is basically c into u 1 dash, you just take uh, uh, x dot. So, d by d t. So, d by d t is just uh, u 1 dash into c, is uh, d by d t of this is minus uh, u 2 dash into c. So, it is just again uh, you have to differentiate the function and whatever is inside the function. So, that means u 1 and u 2 are more or less same apart from maybe an additive constant. So, in fact, you will be able to convince yourself that additive constant is in fact 0. So, u 1 equals u 2 actually. So, that means this is equal to L by 20 uh, sin S pi by L. 
so that is u1 s is equal to that so uh, so that means x uh, s t is basically equal to l by 20 into sin of s plus c t into pi by l uh, plus uh, l by 20 sin s minus c t into pi by l. So, this is the complete solution of the problem with the initial condition with the given initial condition. So, that means that uh, the rubber band uh, will oscillate in this way that means once you release uh, the displacement uh, at any point s uh, between 0 and l will be like this. Okay, so, this is basically it will create standing waves because this is a travelling wave in the left uh, right to left, this is travelling wave in the left to right. So, they will superpose and create standing waves which is not at all surprising because both the ends are fixed. So, you cannot have travelling waves, I mean you will have superposition of travelling waves which are superposed in both directions which is basically a standing wave. So, uh, so now the question is uh, the question of course, very cleverly does not ask you to find this, but it uh, I uh, the questioner namely me knows that in order to find the tension in the uh, rubber band I have to first calculate the displacement as a function of position and time. So, now let us go ahead and answer the actual question that has been asked what is the tension in the rubber band. So, the tension in the rubber band basically is the generalized force that is acting. So, that means you just have to uh, this is the tension in the rubber band. So, this is the generalized force ok. So, because after all uh, what is L it is uh, kinetic minus potential, but kinetic does not depend on x it only depends on x dot. So, it is basically minus v d by d t d by d x of minus v. So, that is minus d v by d x which is basically force and force is basically because here there is the force means the tension uh, generalized force. So, the force is actually the tension. So, what is d l by d x we already calculated that it is basically kappa into uh, d x squared by d s squared. So, the tension in the sp uh, spring is kappa into d x squared by d s squared, but now we have already got uh, that one. So, the so it is basically same as uh, uh, pi squared by l squared into kappa into x itself ok. So, where x is this one because each time you differentiate you get pi by l if you differentiate with respect to s you will get pi by l again your uh, sign becomes cos, but cos becomes uh, cos becomes minus sign ok. So, uh, yeah so there is a minus sign looks like yeah I, I missed a minus sign yeah. So, there is a generalized force. So, there is a minus sign. So, that is ok because s x can be both negative as well as positive. So, depending on uh, what is the displacement right. So, that remains to be seen we will have to see what is the meaning I mean the sense in which what is what is the meaning of the negative, but basically this is what it is. So, this is the uh, tension in the rubber band at any uh, at any point s between 0 and l and at any time t. So, so clearly uh, when s is equal to 0 you expect no tension in the rubber band because if you hold the rubber band close to the end point. Uh, say the left end point it is not going to uh, stretch at all because your finger will not uh, feel any tension because uh, already that uh, uh, that stick is uh, holding the rubber band quite tightly. So, you do not have to put in any effort to hold the rubber band, but if you are in the middle there is nothing holding the rubber band. So, it will it is constantly moving to left right left right it is oscillating. So, if you suddenly pinch the middle you will feel a lot of pulling and pushing. So, the center will have a lot of uh, tension compared to the end points. So, the end points will not be pushed and pulled because there is no displacement there ok. So, that is the bottom line. So, the lastly the question is what is the potential and means the elastic energy. The elastic energy means the all the 
potential energy is stored in the spring. So, that is basically obtained by just calculating uh, this u. So, the if you calculate this that itself is the elastic energy. It is so, it is half k uh, half kappa. So, the elastic energy is uh, uh, one half uh, kappa into integral d s from 0 to l uh, d x by d s whole squared right the, that is what we did. Yeah. So, so you just have to calculate d x by d s. So, sin will become cos and you will become so it will become like this. So, this you should calculate on your own. So, it will be like this d s and it will be l by 20 whole squared then it will be uh, pi by l uh, sin uh, yeah sin will become cos pi squared by l squared pi by l into s plus c t uh, minus uh, yeah plus sorry because uh, both this, this sin will also become cos this sin will also become cos plus cos both will become plus. So, whole square. So, you just have to evaluate this integral. Okay. So, then that is the answer for the elastic energy. So, that will be a function of time because uh, things are constantly being uh, you know energy is constantly getting shifted from potential to kinetic then back to potential then again kinetic. So, it is an oscillation. So, basically initially uh, there is only potential energy no kinetic energy because the spring is stretched but nothing is moving. Uh, so, I mean the rubber band is stretched uh, and compressed uh, and so there is a lot of elastic energy that is stored in uh, at the start, but nothing is moving. So, there is no kinetic energy. So, once you release all that uh, gradually all that uh, potential energy the elastic energy gets converted to kinetic then again the kinetic will give it back to potential and etcetera etcetera. So, it will continue like that indefinitely. Okay. So, that is the story of this question uh, 6 which is about. So, uh, what we have learnt by doing this is we have learnt how to model uh, a realistic physical system using the idea of a field. So, we have uh, described it in terms of mathematical variables in terms of generalized coordinates that have infinitely many degrees of freedom. So, that constitutes a field. So, we have been able to write down the dynamical equations for the field and we have been able to solve those dynamical equations and then answer interesting questions about the particular system we are studying in this case uh, the tensions uh, the that are there in the rubber band and the elastic energy that is stored and so on and so forth. So, uh, so I hope uh, you have understood this uh, problem and uh, so similarly in the next class I will attempt one more problem uh, which is uh, problem number 9. Uh, which refers to the shape of uh, heavy rope that is hanging under its own weight. Okay, so, that also uses uh, very similar ideas, but there there is no dynamics because it is a statics problem, but still uh, the, there are very, very many similar mathematical similarities are quite striking. So, even though that this is a dynamics question that is a statics question still the mathematics is very similar. So, let us discuss that in the next class and thanks for listening to me. Mm -hmm.